sorry guys, I was late. Okay. Sorry. Right. We called this meeting together to go ahead and go over this program. In your opinion, which evaluation design did you decide to use? <laughs> we decided to use both quantitative and qualitative research designs. Um, so we have the statistics from the, or the quantitative and um, the surveys for the qualitative um, for the police group and we're going to have a focus group for um, the members of the community of the neighborhood. Which would be our qualitative. qualitative. Um, the quantitative we're doing so that way um, if this does proceed to be uh, a good program. Um, we're looking into the future for possible other funding that we might need. So as far as the statistics we would need for um, like grants um, to continue the program. Did you place a deadline as to when you want the information back to you with these groups? We have not done that, but that's, that's a good idea. We should um, pick a de deadline right. to have the information back. That way they'll know, and that way they won't spend a lot of time. Right? Maybe follow up with a postcard or something and thank them for the support. Okay. Why did you decide not to use any other designs? Why did you choose the quality and quality of them? Was there any other reason? We thought it would cover all our bases with both research designs. Um, the qualitative, um, we could find out what about the program worked best, um, all different aspects of it, and like I said, with the quantitative, we could have the statistics on our side. Um, we could be showing before the program was implemented and um, improvements after upon termination. We also thought it was cost effective to um, do the study that we chose, and uh, we don't have a lot of funding for the evaluation, so those are some of the reasons. That was my question, because we know these budget cuts is coming down the pipe, we had to watch our funding and our cuts and where this money's going to come from. So that's good that you guys addressed this issue and looked at the fact that funding is a big issue behind these research data. That's good. Huh? And, and plus, since, you know, there's only three of us that are implementing a plan and the program, uh, it also has to do with the amount of people working this program too. That's just not, we're just not capable, you know, time-wise to do other than quantitative and qualitative measures. That's good because I just don't have the manpower to support this. I want to make sure we stay below our, our limited budget. So it's good that you address this and you're on top of it. What information will you provide in this evaluation is going to be put out in this information? Um, well, some of the information that we'll provide is the statistics um, as far as like a pie chart, bar chart for um, the police department to see how the crime rate was prior to our program um, to where it is now with close to termination um, to show, you know, improvements if any, that we have. Um, also, we, deci we decided we would talk with the community. Um, we feel the community members would be a good source to talk to because they could see it up close and personal. They could tell us um, directly if they've seen a difference. So at that point, that's what we're looking at. Are you going to talk to the group as a whole or are you going to let the spokesperson on your behalf? Or how are you going to address that? We're going to have questions for the focus group, and then we're going to just take our findings and um, just really see how um, they felt overall about our program and, and, like I said before, what's been effective and why they feel it's effective. I think getting their input is very important. Their perception of whether or not things have improved, I think, is going to be key um, to keeping this going. Yeah, it's key because sometimes that group collective information arise one person because that one person that they can be informed of all the issues. So that's good that you're addressing this whole focal group. It's going to bring a lot of information forward. Uh, we also thought of having the police, like two representatives of the police force there too, so that way they can address any issues that we're not able to address to the community members and 
make them feel even more secure about the program. That's a good idea. And our qualitative also is going to address issues of um, like feelings of safety to where whereas our quantitative won't really, it'll be statistics and crime rates and increases or decreases, it's really not going to address any issues of feelings of being more safe or things like that. So that's yeah, why. I don't want to see any group or one person else that's good that we cover all the pieces. So how are you going to go about collecting this data? Well, like we talked about, we have a survey going to the police department. Um, we're going to have the focus group with the community members, the neighborhood people, um, and the feedback from both of those things we're going to put together for a comprehensive result of this um, neighborhood watch. That's good. That's good. And you're talking about graphics, you're talking about the different bar graphs, pie charts that you're going to use to show the um, simulation. Yeah, we decided on the bar graphs. Um, that would probably show a very good indication of how crime was prior to our participation. And it um, would show how things hopefully have dropped since our program has been imp implemented. Um, we thought about the pie graph for the qualitative, just so we can show like an improvement as far as how the community feels it has um, been implemented and how they feel their safety uh, measures have developed since the program has been implemented. Most times people are very visual, they can see it firsthand, they can compare, it usually hits home with them. They can actually absorb and understand this information. And those type of charts are very easy to follow, sorry, no, no, that's okay. for the public too. So. That's my question, because we'll make it as easy as possible. As friendly users as we could. We're going to use PowerPoint, uh, a PowerPoint presentation as well, and I think for the most part that that, you know, people will respond to that well to the PowerPoints. Well, and I help keep the meeting focused and on right. track. Not, you know, for the you can open up the floor at the end for any kind of questions or comments or concerns. Yes. Yeah. So. And I think too with our. Um, charts it will be important to show a positive outcome you know rather than you know showing that the crime rate goes down maybe we can put it into positive terms right. show the overall effect it's going to have on the community group so sounds like you got a good plan in October. so when do you want to meet again i just check my schedule here let's check let's meet again next wednesday at 2 30. Um, Wednesday at 2.30 we have the meeting with the schools, or the uh, neighborhood and the group. So, um, yeah. Okay, what do you have open? I have open. Mm -hmm. 4.30? Yeah. yeah, that would probably give us enough time. Okay. okay. I give you time to click on your dad and, and confer each other and bring to me. Do you want, did you want to meet? prior to us discussing that with them, just so that we, you know, are checked in and like our, you want to look at our surveys just to make sure that everything's in play and that we have the appropriate questions and... It sounds like you're on solid ground and I have faith in, in this group and I know your abilities. I feel that you can go ahead and move forward with this without my intervention. Um, just go ahead and collect the data and have your meeting and bring it to me and we'll go over the results. From there. Okay. I don't want to waste any more time we have to on this and waste man hours. Just go ahead and move forward with it. Okay, sounds, sounds good. good. Thank sounds you. Good.